Stop. If you're considering financing the purchase of a solar power system, then you need to watch this video first because I'm going to be teaching you six key elements that you need to check before you ever sign a solar contract. This video is sponsored by Climate First Bank, a provider of financing options for solar projects. Visit our website to explore our loan programs. All right, now in today's video, we're talking about six key elements that you need to check before signing your solar contract. And the first is clearly stated financial terms. Now guys, you'd be surprised at how many solar contracts don't actually tell you what the contract price is. Some solar is sold using very deceptive tactics where sometimes all the customer is presented with is a monthly payment reduction. They don't actually know that they're taking out a loan to purchase the solar power system or what that total loan amount is. So first things first, make sure that your solar contract accurately displays what your total contract amount is, uh, or in the case of a loan agreement, what your total loan amount is, how much you're borrowing. Now also on that note, if this is gonna be a finance system, make sure that the payment structure is listed out. What is your monthly payment amount? What is the term or the schedule of payments? Uh, and are there any escalators? Meaning, does that payment go up each year, which is very common with solar leases and PPAs? Of course, if you're doing traditional financing, you want to know what your interest rates and fees are. Uh, of course, your rate of interest and, and the total interest that you're going to pay over the lifetime of the financing. But you also want to know about the fees. And the fees are especially important in solar because not only are there uh, typical financing fees and transaction fees, but in solar, we also have to deal with dealer fees. Now, I know guys, dealer fees are a part of the solar financing equation that a lot of times we don't like to talk about, but it can have tremendous impact on the total project cost or on the total amount being financed. You see, dealer fees are fees that are charged by financial institutions to the solar installers, and the solar installers pass these fees on to homeowners in the form of a higher contract price. Now, oftentimes the homeowner looks at the contract and they think all they're paying for is materials and labor, not realizing that the material and labor cost has been inflated to cover the cost of the dealer fees that the solar contractor has to pay. Uh, and in the case of solar, these dealer fees could be significant. In some cases, it could add 20%, 30%, even 40% to the total project cost. So definitely make sure that you ask your contractor or ask your salesperson, are you paying any dealer fees? Or another way to ask the question would be, what would the price be if I'm paying cash? And then finally, look at the estimated savings on your solar contract. You know, oftentimes when solar is being sold, you might see on your proposal a projected savings over the next 20, 25, or 30 years. Uh, but also look at any assumptions that may have gone into that savings calculation. Uh, oftentimes there is an assumed escalation in utility prices. Typically it's about 4% per year retail electric price inflation. But sometimes deceptive and unethical sales teams, they may inflate that escalator figure. So they may show you a projection based on 7% or 8% annual energy price inflation when the reality is closer to 3 or 4%. So make sure you check the assumptions on your energy savings forecast. All right, the second major thing you need to check is a detailed outline of the project scope. Uh, again, folks, you'll be very surprised to know how much solar is sold without the homeowner even knowing what specific solar equipment they're purchasing. Uh, sometimes solar is sold as just a, let's say an 8.5 kilowatt system without actually specifying which panels or batteries or inverters are being used. So make sure that your solar contract specifies the specific quantity, make and model of all of your major system components. Again, that's gonna be your solar panels or your solar modules, your inverter or your micro inverters, uh, and uh, the battery storage system, if you're gonna be installing battery storage along with your solar. Make sure it's listed out exactly what make and model of equipment you're gonna be receiving. The solar contract should also explain who's responsible for what. For example, pretty much any solar project that's connected to the utility grid, you're gonna to have to submit a permit application to your local jurisdiction, and then that jurisdiction is gonna to have to come out when the work is completed to inspect everything to make sure that all the work is done to code. But there may be other filings required. For example, you may have to file with your power company for an interconnection agreement for net metering. It's common that the solar contractor will do the interconnection agreement for you, but in some cases they may assume that you're going to file the application directly with the utility company yourself. Now, if you live in a neighborhood that has a homeowners association, you may also have to submit an application to the homeowners association. Uh, typically they call it the architectural review board, 
each homeowners association or property owners association might call it something slightly different, but basically if you have to apply to your local neighborhood governing body to make modifications or make additions to your home, make sure you check with your contractor. Are they gonna be filling that paperwork out for you or do you have to do it yourself? And then finally, if you wanna qualify for any additional rebates or incentives, there may be additional paperwork that you have to file there. Uh, for example, your solar federal tax credit. Uh, it's typically something that you would have to file on your own as the system owner. The contractor doesn't usually do that for you. Uh, but you could also have other utility rebates or other local incentives for installing solar. Make sure it's clear at the time of sale who's responsible for filling out which paperwork so that everybody's expectations are met. All right, the third major thing you have to check are the warranties and the performance guarantees. Now, it's pretty typical for a solar power system to come with a 25-year warranty, and you're going to have multiple levels of warranty protection. Uh, the first, of course, is your manufacturer's warranty. Now, pretty much all tier one solar panels being offered today come with a 25 year warranty from the manufacturer. However, some inverter companies don't necessarily offer the full 25 year warranty. For your inverters, we typically see warranties anywhere as little as five years, or some do go up to the full 25 years. Now, in addition to the equipment warranties, you also wanna look at what are your installation warranties or your workmanship warranties offered by the contractor. You know, right now I would say anything five years or more is decent for a workmanship warranty. Uh, and of course that should cover not only the electrical wiring, but specifically the waterproofing around any roof attachment points. Now, another thing that's common with solar are power production guarantees. And so if your solar company is guaranteeing you a certain amount of electricity production out of your solar system, make sure that that's spelled out there in the solar contract. And also be clear, are they guaranteeing you 100% of the forecasted production? Or are they only guaranteeing you, let's say 80% or 90% of the computer forecasted production? Make sure you know that at the time of sale. And then finally, you need to check on any monitoring or apps that might be available so you can track how the system is performing. Uh, again, Pretty much all the top inverter manufacturers now offer some sort of a, a monitoring app that you can run on your smartphone, but make sure that it specifies in your solar contract what the method of monitoring is so that you can stay on top of everything. Uh, and then of course, you have to know what is your emergency service contact number. So if you do have a technical support issue with your solar system, maybe one of the solar panels is not producing, uh, or especially if you have a battery backup system and that battery backup system fails, you, you could lose power to circuits within your home. So you wanna know who do you call, particularly who do you call after hours if you have an emergency and you need to get a technician out to your house right away. All right, the fourth major thing you need to look for are the disclosures and the consumer rights. So when we think about consumer rights, the first thing to check is what is your cancellation policy? Many states require that solar contracts give the homeowner a cancellation period where there would be no penalty to cancel. Sometimes it's 10 days, sometimes it's three days, but basically most solar contracts should have a provisions where if you change your mind after the point of sale, within a certain time window, you can cancel the solar contract without penalty. Uh, and the cancellation form, whatever, whatever paperwork you need to submit to, to do a cancellation, should be included in your original contract package. Now, another thing to look for is some basic consumer education about how the solar program works in your area. Now, many of you who are going solar now can take advantage of net metering programs with your utility. And basically with a net metering program, you can power your house directly using solar power during daylight hours, and you can send excess solar power back to the utility, building up credits on your account. So that then during the evening hours when the sun is no longer producing, you can pull electricity back in from the power company using the credits you built up during the day. And then finally, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your solar agreement discloses any third party involvement. Now, when we talk about third parties, this is very common in solar in recent years. It's very common that the person who's selling you your solar power system works for a different company than the contractor who's, who's actually gonna do the physical installation for you. So in, in the solar industry, they call them sales orgs or dealers. Basically, it's, it's companies of sales and marketing people whose job it is to get customers signed up, but then you have a separate construction company or contractor that comes in later to do the work. So make sure that your paperwork discloses not just who are you buying from, but who is the licensed contractor that's gonna be doing the work. Uh, also, of course, if you're financing your solar power system, 
The paperwork should disclose who you're borrowing from if you're taking out a solar loan and what the repayment terms are. Which is actually a great time to introduce today's video sponsor, Climate First Bank. Today's video is brought to you by Climate First Bank. If you're looking for a solar financing partner that offers competitive rates, no dealer fees, and a simple online application process, then you need to take a look at Climate First Bank. Climate First Bank is committed to ethical solar financing with full transparency and a secure online application process. Reach out directly on the Climate First Bank website and you'll be matched with an approved installer in your area. So if you're ready to start your renewable energy journey with a financing partner you can trust, then go directly to climatefirstbank.com surge so you can get matched with an approved installer in your area right away. Thank you Climate First Bank for supporting the channel and for sponsoring today's video. Now, the fifth major item you have to check is the regulatory compliance. Now, first things first when it comes to compliance is, is the contractor properly licensed? I mean, this one really should go, should go without me having to say it, but the solar contractor should list the name of the contractor, the contractor's license number, as well as the license classification. And when we talk about license classification, uh, we're talking about what is their specialties that they're rated for. Are they rated for electrical, uh, roofing work, uh, could be plumbing, HVAC. But typically in solar, at a minimum, you have to have an electrical contracting license. Uh, also check for any limits on the license. Lower license grades carry lower price limits or basically the, the maximum dollar amount of the projects that they can do. So I know when I first got licensed in Virginia, the lowest level contractor license, what they call a class C, was limited to $10,000 of work or less. Now, with a one level up, I believe you could go up to $120,000 per project. And then of course, with a class A license, you can do projects uh, up to an, an unlimited value, right? Unlimited size. So make sure that you check that the contractor is properly licensed and that the license class is large enough to support the project that they're proposing. Now, another thing you may want to look into is the contractor's insurance, specifically the worker's compensation insurance, so that if any of the workers get injured during the course of the installation of the solar panels, they can't come after you as a homeowner uh, claiming that you're liable for the injury that they sustained on your property. Now, contractor's insurance is not necessarily always listed on the solar contract itself, but you can always request for proof of insurance and they should be able to provide an insurance certificate for you. And then finally, you wanna check on any provisions for dispute resolution. Now, I've seen some solar contracts where they will specify that if there's ever a dispute between the buyer and the contractor, that those disputes would be resolved through arbitration uh, or through mediation to avoid the additional cost of a court trial. Uh, but if the dispute does end up going to litigation or end up going to an actual trial, should also specify in which jurisdiction that case would be brought. And then finally, the sixth key item to look for is the end of system life and transferability. Now, most solar power systems being sold and installed today are guaranteed for 25 years. So the contract should explain what would happen at the end of that 25 year period. Uh, are you just left with the system to dispose of it on your own? Uh, is the contractor going to come out and decommission or deinstall the system for you? You know, basically what happens at the end of system life? On that note, another thing to consider is if you may need a roof replacement sometime during the course of that 25 year life of your solar system. Uh, if you only have 10 years remaining on your roof, but you're investing in a 25 year solar system, you want to know what options are available when it comes time to have that roof replaced. Now, many solar contractors will offer to come back out to take the panels off and reinstall them for you. Sometimes they may do that at no extra charge or they may have an extra charge for that, which you do want to inquire about at the point of original sale. Also, consider whether or not you can transfer ownership of the system. Now, with a transferable system, typically the, the new buyer or the new owner of the home will have to be able to qualify for credit just like you did at the time of initiating the original solar project. However, if your solar financing is not transferable, then that means that you as the original owner need to be prepared to pay off any balance that may be on the system 
at the time you transfer the property. If the contractor can't give you a direct answer on this issue, uh, best to reach out to the lender, see what the process is, if any, for being able to transfer the solar financing to a new homeowner. And then finally, consult with a real estate agent in your area that has experience working with homes that have solar panels. Again, this is just to make sure that you know exactly what to expect and you can have a smooth transfer process as possible. So this is in a discussion of six key things to check before signing your solar contract. Uh, guys, of course, if you're getting good value from these videos, make sure you give us a thumbs up uh, and go ahead and subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't done so already. That way, as new videos like this come out, it'll come up on your, your suggested videos and that way you can stay up to date with everything. Uh, of course, if you're looking for a great solar financing partner that you can trust, we endorse Climate First Bank. They believe in ethical solar financing with full transparencies and never any dealer fees. Of course, if you're a homeowner and you're in the process of looking at different solar and battery storage options for your home, uh, if you need to get a price quote or maybe you already have a price quote and you need to get a comparison quote to make sure that you're getting the best equipment and getting the best deal, as always, you can reach out to us on the link below here Set up a call with a solar surge expert, uh, or just use the free online calculator tool to see how much solar and battery storage costs in your area. But that pretty much does it for today's presentation. I thank you all for spending some more time on the Solar Surge channel. And as always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.